Well, welcome everyone to our webinar with our amazing community of practice co-moderator of Family for Every Child, Felipe Mairelis, uh, who will be sharing his insights on how to create a growing global movement of local change makers through an online community platform. Uh, well, they have actually been using an open social installation uh, for their Changemakers for Old Children platform for about one and a half years now, give or take. Uh, so they definitely have some insight on why they need their own community, how they're using it, what success have they had, and what challenges there have been so far. Um, First, also, we would like to start with a very simple question, um, pretty much who you are. Uh, so Felipe and I have an idea if you're an open social user yourself, if you're interested in the community or any other reason, um, let's say that you can uh, fill out. So that would be very helpful from your side. Um, yes, and there will be also one other po uh, poll that Felipe will share uh, later on. Uh, at the end of the webinar, we'll also cover some Q&A, um, where Felipe will then also address them towards the end of the webinar. Um, last but not least, also uh, the session will be recorded and then also shared with you as well as shared on Community Talks, which is our client platform, uh, where this will be also shared so you can also view it for your pleasure later on. Um, yes, and that's pretty much it from my side for now. Uh, Felipe, the floor is all yours. Hi, everybody. Uh, first of all, I would just like to say thank you so much for your time, for staying here, and for watching my presentation. My name is Felipe, Felipe Meirelles. I am based in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, and I work at Family for Every Child. I'm going to explain a bit what family is. Uh, and yeah, just wanted to, to, to say thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you, Jamila, for the opportunity. It's an honor to be here, and I hope you enjoy this presentation. So I'll start sharing my screen then. And well, I'm going to talk about Change Makers for Children, our uh, social network, our community, our platform for child rights practitioners everywhere, and how we are using it to create a global movement a local civil society organizations supporting children and families. Uh, I am the community of practice co-moderator. That means I am one of the people who care for change makers for children and I am responsible for lots of things from approving new users to creating content and upgrading the platform. And I'm going to share a bit of this experience with you. Um, so today we are going to talk about family for every child and how do we use change makers for children to increase our impact, how our platform is structured, the key features, and also I'm going to share you some real world results, some what we are achieving with change makers for children so far. And also we're going to share a bit of challenges and next steps uh, because we always want to improve and make it more organic and more relevant to the people we are working with. So about family for every child, before I start talking about family for every child, I have a quick poll to you. Um, the answer, the, the, the question is, how many children are living in orphanages in the world? Choose the option that's, that makes the most sense to you. Okay, so we have 50-50 uh, between 3.8 and 9.42 million is the answer. So currently, according to a research published by The Lancet last year during the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, it is estimated that around between 3.18 and 9.42 million children are in residential care uh, uh, in the world at the moment. And family for every child's work is related to it, but not only, we do much more and I'm going to explain it right now. So family for every child is a global alliance of 40 local CSOs, civil society organizations, and they are based in 40 countries. And we are working with children and families worldwide. So uh, family for every child is a member led organization that means we have a secretariat, but all of our members, they are 
uh, spread throughout the world and all of our decision processes, all of our campaigns, they are member-led, all, all of our decisions are taken by members, okay? And we really uh, enjoy the approach for a reason. Uh, we want a world where children and families everywhere can have access to dignity, so all the support they need to survive and thrive. We do believe that the best place for a child is inside a safe and permanent caring family, but in case that child cannot be in a family for some reason, we want to make sure that the institutions provide the, the, the dignity they need to thrive. We also want to avoid family separation, and we try to do this by raising awareness and by capacity building with families and caregivers. Our mission is to make that happen. So we want the children to live and families to live in dignity, and we want to make that happen. And the way we make that happen is through research, knowledge exchange, and campaigning. That means uh, we learn from our members because they are deeply rooted in their own contexts. So they understand the issue. They also understand the solution. But many times, those local civil society organizations, they have capacity issues and they don't have the capability to reach international levels. And that's what we try to facilitate by creating family for every child. So our secretariat staff works to make sure our members can exchange and learn from each other. We can promote their models and we can also work together on joint initiatives and campaign to change realities. So how do we use change makers for children to, to increase the impact? Uh, during the pandemic, it all started with the pandemic. So COVID-19 arrived and it posed a major threat to members' work. So you can imagine our members are working in local contexts. They are working with vulnerable children and families they need to support. And then the pandemic uh, disrupts some services. Uh, it imposes severe challenges and it makes almost impossible for many of them to keep reaching out to the families and the children they need to, to reach out to. But they were resilient, they were brave, and they were creative, and they created innovative ways to keep providing those services. And then we decided to launch Change Makers for Children for members only in the beginning to support them exchange information on best practices of care during the pandemic. But not only that, we were also supporting them with funding opportunities, uh, with interesting, interesting resources, news, blog posts, and anything that could actually uh, bring a benefit, uh, an added value to the work they were already uh, providing in their local territories. Then when we decide- how, yes. are you, how are you doing it before the pandemic? How are you uh, like exchanging best practices? Okay, so Family for Every Child actually had two physical offices in London, and in Australia, of course, we needed to close the office and we, uh, we, we used to work with members separately. We still have thematic leads in, uh, for our portfolios because we have a programmatic portfolio with several teams. They range from uh, prevention of sexual violence to family care and kinship care and domestic violence. We are also working with children in uh, incarceration. So, we have our thematic leads and we had working groups where some of our members used to, to, to join and to, to get together based on their interests and, and their specialties. And we were used to organize, uh, of course, we used Zoom a lot before the pandemic because the, our members are spread worldwide. So we have this experience with the digital, but we didn't have this experience of having a community that concentrates all the information. Okay, so this, this is the, the, the main shift, uh, getting everybody in the same space uh, with a resource library they can access uh, and a place they can post and they can meet each other. And after that, after that first experience, the care during COVID-19 would become our first open community of practice when we decided to launch Change Makers for Children in the following year. So yeah, last year, we finally decided to launch Change Makers for Children as a global community of child rights professionals. Uh, so that means we are facilitating that space for child rights practitioners and child rights specialists from all around the globe to come together to learn, exchange, and collaborate on initiatives. And since we launched Change Makers for Children, uh, until nowadays, we have 
more than a thousand. We have 1,626 people uh, from 124 different countries that have joined our community, registered, and created a profile. So, and how do we structure our community of practice? So, Change Makers for Children has a main platform feed, like many other social networks, and as I know, many other colleagues who use open social do. So we, we use this platform main feed. I'm going to show you in a minute. We have seven open communities of practice. I'm going to explain a bit about them. We also have a resource library where we concentrate all of the reports, blogs, news, and information we share at the platform. And, of, and we also have a dedicated area for family members. So it's important to differentiate here that we have family members and we have community members. So community members is everyone who join Change Makers for Children, but the fam for family members, we are talking about the, that those same organizations that were with us before we launched Change Makers for Children. They are the core of our movement. So they are the ones who will be, who we are going to be supporting the most. And each community of practice has one moderator from the program team who is a specialist on the thematic uh, of, of the respective community. And also the platform has two site administrators. That would be, one, one would be myself and the other one would be my colleague, Lizelle Finlay, who is currently off on maternity leave. And we have seven open communities. So the first one is the care during COVID-19. I explained about it already. And we also have the child protection and humanitarian action. Uh, it's a community we created in partnership with the Alliance of Child Protection and Humanitarian Action to discuss best practices on how to better protect children in humanitarian situation conflicts. We are uh, right now we are seeing what's going on in Ukraine, and there's there are discussions taking place right now there, and they are also reaching out to to to, to their partner organizations. They are using Change Makers for Children to ask for help for translators to translate uh, important documents to Ukrainian. Uh, we have the kinship care community to discuss alternative care. That means uh, no institutionalization, no orphanages, uh, no residential care, more family care, uh, uh, family related extended care. We have the lived experience platform that is open to children and youth with lived experience of care. So people who actually experienced that. We also have the, the prevention of domestic violence against children. This is our newest community. And the reintegration of children on the move talks about refugees, internally displaced children, migrant children. Uh, they are doing this migration flow between Middle East and North Africa and European countries in the Mediterranean. Uh, mostly, Greece, but we are also working with Germany because Germany is a common destination. And finally, the Rise Learning Network is dedicated to the prevention and response to sexual abuse and sexual violence against children. That's the only community uh, that has a request to join. And we do that because of safeguarding purposes and because of the sensitivity of the content we share and discuss there. So the key platform features for us First of all, uh, we have some custom registration fields and I will highlight the communities of interest and the kind of organization. So people can select their communities of interest upon registration so we can add them directly to those communities. Uh, we have auto translation, which is key for us because as you can imagine, Change Makers for Children is global. It aims to be global. We have people from 124 countries and uh, we, we should expect that most of them will not speak English. So we actually want people to be able to read the content in their preferred language, but not only that, we want them to be able to post and comment and also share resources in their preferred language, because that way we can make it a truly global and decolonized space. Uh, another thing that is not in this presentation, but we might we find very useful as well, is that we, uh, we really like that, that the possibility of changing your time zone in the account settings because that way we can organize uh, transcontinental conferences, events, and webinar, and people can be aware of the exact time it starts based on their location. Uh, I'm going to share an example shortly. 
Uh, yeah, we use the platform stream for sharing the latest news. So here I have two examples, a post by Anthony Martin, uh, talking about uh, a recent practitioner guidance papers they share. And here there is uh, a weekly tip on how to access our resource library. This was posted by me, by myself. Uh, we use dashboards for our communities of practice uh, in, in, a, in, a middle, in the middle between the landing page and the group. We do this because we want to organize the content and we want to organize more than one group in a single community. Uh, we have one case, one example of the CPHA community. They have two groups. One is for protection and humanitarian action, and the other, the other one is about child, children in armed conflicts. So we organize the two groups into the same community dashboard, and we find that useful. I have a question. Uh, um, why was yes. the decision, for example, now made to put all these different communities? Because in the beginning, it started with COVID, right? Like, why was this decision made? And you did, like, centralize it, right? Um, was that the reason for why you did it? For some of every child? Well, uh, we already had the, the Rise Learning Network uh, in a separated website. And then we decided to migrate the Rise and Learning Network to Change Makers for Children as well, because it already had its audience. So it was like uh, almost natural that we would do, do that. And as we grew, we started creating new communities based on strategic needs and demands from portfolio leads. So then we create the Children on the Move community, and after that, the Kinship Care, and we keep growing and creating new communities as our strategy changes. And of course, one of our next steps, I'm going to talk about it later, is to review the, 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 the whole structure of the, of the Changemakers community to make sure it fits within our, our uh, uh, actual strategy. So, and this is how a group look like, looks like. I think you, should, you might have seen it already. Uh, this is the Kinship Care, the, the group of the Kinship Care community of practice. Uh, this is our resource library where we concentrate all the resources and we have these different content tags we can use to, to classify the content. Uh, we really enjoy using the events uh, feature on Changemakers and we use the Zoom integration. That's great because people can actually register uh, to events inside Changemakers for Children and enjoy directly. And uh, of course, this is an example of one of our topics beyond institutional care. This was created by Anne-Marie. Sorry, let me get back to it. And yes, this is an example of a discussion. You can see Dr. Abla is posting in Arabic and I'm answering in Portuguese. And this is possible because of the auto-translation feature. So now I'm going to share some, some real results and Maybe some success a stories. short question. How do you, what do you use discussions exactly for out of interest? Like what would you say is one of the discussions that for example, these comments is from? Okay, so I'm going to share two examples. This screenshot was taken from uh, an introduction discussion we created in the Kinship Care Group. So we just created a discussion uh, with three bullet points asking people to introduce themselves Tell, about, tell a bit about their organizations and their expectations from that space. And that's good because we can get people to introduce themselves, meet with each other, and as they introduce themselves and they tell about their interests, we can also recommend some, some interesting materials we already have available, and they can uh, go to those materials and keep uh, uh, searching for information on change makers. Another one we recently created uh, I can't show you that discussion because uh, it's on a member only space, but I can talk about it. Uh, one of our members has fundraising issues, which is a common reality for a lot of civil society organizations around the world. Uh, and she wanted to understand how she could raise funds permanently to, to support their activities. So uh, she created a discussion there and we are getting some responses already from members and colleagues who are sharing their, their same impressions. So discussions are a good opportunity to, to actually uh, share impressions in a structured way. And I hope that from that discussion, we can start working on solutions. So we will be launching a community of practice for fundraising now 
because we understand that that is a key problem our members are trying to tackle. Yeah, thank you. No worries. And now I'm going to share some some real results. Uh, first of them is the United Nations Day of general of general discussion. So the United Nations Committee on the Rights of the Child uh, usually organizes every two weeks the DGD, the Day of General Discussion, and it's the objective is to reflect on the Convention of the Rights of the Child and also on what it means in terms of children and their rights. They actually want to reflect on, on the articles of the of the Convention and on children's experience to reflect uh, recommendations on public policies. Uh, so DGD last year was on children's rights and alternative care. And we use change makers for children to hold a consultation with care experienced children and youth. So what we did was we created a secret group on change makers for children uh, with, with very specific feasibility settings because of safeguarding. We didn't want uh, other people on the platform to be able to reach out to children and youth. And we had also op open global consultations we made it public using the survey extension on, on change makers for children. And we used three languages, English, Spanish, and French. And also we created a dashboard concentrating some key information about the DGD with hyperlinks to access that, that key information. So this is the, how, how that dashboard looks like in Spanish and some links to, to learn more about it and to take the survey. And these are some examples of submissions made by the, the children. We have this one from a child, uh, from a boy from Syria. He was in a home from unaccompanied minors in Greece. Uh, this home is actually managed by Meta Drassi, one of from Family for Every Child members. And we have this other statement uh, from a child from New Zealand, uh, Aotearoa, I don't know how to pronounce that in Maori, uh, but she, she's talking about the importance of being with family and friends and, and so on. So this is uh, some real examples of real children uh, who actually come to took our survey and our workshops. And as a result, we got more than a thousand children and young people taking part in our surveys. And from those surveys, we submitted three reports. We actually submitted one global report to the United Nations Committee, and we've contributed to another two reports, one about Europe and another one about New Zealand. And those reports, we presented those reports to the United Nations in the live sessions, and those reports contributed to the recommendations the Committee of the Rights of the Child brought to the whole planet on how to, to, to better improve the rights of child, of children in, in alternative care. Uh, the next example uh, is my favorite one because I, I, start, I, I worked on it from the beginning to the end, which is the BICON conference. So BICON is the largest conference on alternative care for children in Asia. It was supposed to happen in Kathmandu, Nepal, but because, because of the pandemic and especially the pandemic outbreak in Asia that happened last year, we, needed, we decided to, to host the conference on change makers for children uh, digitally for the first time and for the first time also on change makers for children. Uh, the, the conference was organized by Family for Every Child, but not only, we also had SOS Children Village, Save the Children, Open Homes Foundation, Lumos, and the support from UNICEF. We also got the Die and Care, Better Care Network, and Forget Me Not. So all the main organization working with, ch with child rights and alternative care in the world were involved in this project. And we use the dashboard as the registration page. Uh, I am gonna show you how it looks. And we also created a discussion group for all the Baikon attendees to meet each other. So th that's the community part of the Baikon conference. This is how the group looks like. You can see it has 380 members, all of those enrolled in the conference. This is the event listing. So we created each session as a separated event on change makers and we registered the people who, who, who registered for the conference. And this is the bike conversation. So the discussion I created inside the group for people to introduce themselves. And it's what, what I think is interesting here to, to see is that Diksha is a care experienced young, young girl from Nepal. She's presented herself. And I have Iftekar Ahmed, who's a specialist in children with disabilities. And Suruchi works in Nepal. She's the 
uh, project officers uh, uh, forget me not. So this is a bit of people introducing themselves and tagging other people to introduce themselves as well. And as a result, we got three, 390 registrations uh, for, more, for almost 180 organizations. Our sessions had 48 speakers from 19 countries and we got 23 sections across two days. And people from governments, UN agencies, international NGOs, civil society organizations, and also children and youth in care were there. Finally, uh, I'm going to talk and about- And before, maybe my sh short question was like, what was the conference's goal and was it reached? Can you ask the question again? What was the conference's goal and was it reached? What was the goal of the conference? Like getting people together or ideating or having a discussion regarding a specific topic or what was the goal you were trying to achieve and was it achieved? That conference was really comprehensive. Uh, we discussed during several sessions, we discussed several themes that are related to, to child rights care in Asia. And of course we wanted as the final outcome of back, the Bakken conference after re listening to all the specialists we wanted to come with uh, recommendations to, to, to present to the relevant authorities in Asia uh, on how to improve the, the rights of children and families and caregivers uh, to, to improve alternative care in Asia. So we wanted to inform policies for alternative care. And we actually came out with this final report, uh, this final Biden report we are already circulating and that you can download uh, on Changemakers for Children. I can share the link on the chat, by the way. Um, just give me a second. Okay, so conscious of time, I'm going to quickly talk about the domestic violence toolkit. So you, we all should know that a lot of children and families are under, have actually experienced or, or are under threat of experience domestic violence in any form and that the pandemic uh, has made it much worse. And uh, we, we decided to create a toolkit that features examples of prevention approaches by Family for Every Child members uh, to domestic violence during the COVID-19 in nine countries. So we, just, we created uh, this PDF toolkit in four languages, uh, English, Spanish, Bang Bangla and Sinhalese and then we decided to put that same toolkit in a book page structure. So this is how it looks on Changing Makers for Children. Uh, it's good because we do, you don't only have the text, we also have a video of 10 minutes where Champa Gunasekera from Sri Lanka explains about their approach. So it's much, it, it's more interactive and people can actually go there, comment and Champa can answer. So, so we have this interactive pers uh, aspect. Um, so to promote the toolkit, we are also launching a new community of practice on domestic violence. And we are going to have a panel discussion next week on domestic violence as well. And you are all invited to, to, to participate. Uh, this is the dashboard of the community. And this is the event. We already have 46 people enrolled. And I'm going to share the link with you so you can enroll as well. Um, so challenges and next steps. And I promise I'm finishing this, Jamila. Um, no, you're completely good on time. No reason to rush. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna relax. Uh, so our so let's talk about the challenge because uh, not everything is perfect, and we have some problems because first, local local protectionists they always they usually have capacity and technology challenges. We have poor internet connections. They have uh, uh, a small number of staff. And they don't, they sometimes they don't have the resources or the capacity in terms of time to go to change makers and use it. And some of them still don't understand the value uh, of change makers for children to their work. So member participation uh, is challenging sometimes. So we have a way to go to make change makers an organic community because engagement is still too dependent on community management. Uh, so for, on community manager, myself included. Um, so the next step, we want to review the platform, we want to streamline layout of it, and we want to update the onboarding journey to make sure- Maybe people, uh, one question uh, before, if I may ask. <laughs> uh, yeah. One question also regarding the challenge, why do you think it is so, what was the reasoning that it's still so, for example, community management heavy? Uh, what do you think were the steps that that happened? 
Um, I have some I have some theories. I'm going to share the link again, Hyro, well, yeah. at the Q&A part, okay? So I, I have some, some, some impressions of it. I, for, first of all, I think it's because uh, many of the Family for Every Child members, they are senior in every sense. They are older. They also uh, are directors, CEOs, and many of them don't have the, the time to actually go there and, and, and engage with content. So we are looking uh, into bringing other stuff. So people who work with more, the, more of the operational side because they might have uh, things to, 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 to ask, to share, and also people from the communications teams who might want to share events and opportunities they are promoting and they might want people to come. So this is uh, some of the hypotheses and some of the possible solutions we are trying to build. Also, uh, we want to improve the, the, our onboarding process, our email welcome journey, and we want to start having more workshops with members, individual workshops with members, and individual workshops with secretariat staff. So we are going outside of change makers. We are reaching out to, to people, uh, for, to people to to have uh, Zoom workshops with them, and from their feedback, we are going to improve to to, to continuously upgrade. Uh, that, that platform because we do want it to be relevant to the people and we do want people to see change makers as the go-to place uh, to ask questions, to promote opportunities and to, to engage. Um, so yes, and also we want, so I, I, told, I told about that already and we, also, we are also looking forward to use change makers for more collaborative efforts in terms of campaigning and also in terms of mobilizing around key dates because uh, so not only family members will be attending and engaging in our campaigns, we also want every community members to take part as well, because that way we can uh, maximize, we can escalate the impact of the work we are already doing. So this is everything I have to present. Thank you so much. And I'm going to share the right links in a minute. While you maybe share the links, uh, also, does anyone have questions regarding generally Family for Every Child for Felipe as a community manager or co-community manager, as he says, or anything else? You can ask in the Q&A or jump in and ask away. Uh, this is your chance to ask someone uh, in the field. We'll give you a couple of minutes maybe to write out. <laughs> Since we're very good on time, thanks to Felipe. <laughs> is the is the dashboard by the way showing Felipe public? Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, we get the first question. What has been the biggest achievement of the community platform so far and how did you get there? Okay. Um, should I stop sharing my screen right now? Uh, as you wish. Okay. You can it's... keep it there. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Um, I would say the biggest achievement so far is the the day of general discussion. Having children, young people, and partner organizations from different places, uh, going on change makers for children, discussing, having workshops with them, I think that's fantastic. I also think that's fantastic that so many people actually took our surveys and contributed their views. Um, at this particular moment, I am celebrating my day-to-day -day small victories. Uh, I think uh, what I, what I like the most about Change Makers for Children is to log in every day and to see people introducing themselves and sharing their events. Uh, at, at this exact moment, I have some family members sharing videos on them, of themselves on the platform stream and promoting the event we are having next week. So I think this is a great feature. Uh, I think all of the things we get when we are building our community are great victories because uh, it's such a slow and time-consuming and complicated process. And so when we see people liking, 
Comin team saying, this is very useful to me. This is fantastic. This is really fantastic. And I also would say that uh, the other biggest achievement is Bicom. So uh, the three things I shared are the three biggest achievements. And Bicom especially is great because we had a conference with people from the Middle East to Japan uh, discussing issues from all over Asia and involving more than eight big organizations. We had stakeholders from the government listening to, to, to what children and youth in care had to say. And change makers for children were the place for that to happen. So those were the two biggest achievements. And I truly hope that at some point in the future, we can get uh, people organically uh, mobilizing and organizing themselves to create their own campaigns and joint initiatives. So every time a member of Changemakers for Children creates a topic sharing a victory or asking for help or sharing a resource, that's already a major victory to me. Victory to me as well. <laughs> Uh, indeed, uh, that's very awesome. Uh, but yeah, as already also Felipe mentioned, um, I'm also, uh, I work with as a customer success manager with Felipe on a specifically and leaves out on family for every child will change makers for children platform. So it's really amazing to see how much you've grown in the one and a half years and also our next steps and our plans ahead of making it even more successful, more global, specifically focusing obviously on these uh, individuals sharing their own content as well uh, independently from yourself so I think it's going to be very exciting times and as also Mark mentioned it's really amazing the sense of work you are doing and generally also change my and family for every child it's really it's really an amazing time are there any other also questions regarding maybe the uh, open social itself the platform or any other questions also for Felipe as a community manager Maybe I have actually one that's interesting. As also community manager, how do you manage like time management? As I know it's also slightly difficult for you, but how do you manage it currently? Well, um, so yeah, it's it's indeed challenging. Uh, but what I'm trying to do at the what we try to do at the moment is we have a content calendar, and we use uh, another tool named Monday.com to to organize the content we're going to post on Change Makers. Every morning, the first thing I do is to approve new users, engage with the existing content, and also uh, to try to post something. So my mornings are usually dedicated to the community, and that's something I have saved in my calendar. Every Friday, I separate my afternoons to review uh, our reports, our data, and work on improvements. And the rest of my time, I'm having meetings with people. Uh, I'm trying to convince them to go to the platform. I'm trying to troubleshoot issues. I'm trying to, to understand what their questions are and to solve them and make recommendations. Uh, it's a, sometimes it's a lot of work. Sometimes we have to work uh, up, up to very late, but it truly compensates because we are actually helping people make a very positive change in the world. Yeah. And every time we share their case studies, and I actually stop to read them or to listen to them through our podcast. That's that's all the all the everything I need. So yeah. yeah. Well, also maybe to know is that you guys, your, uh, you and your colleagues are spread throughout the world as uh, Lizelle, the co-moderator and actually the first uh, moderator also of the platform lives in New Zealand. Uh, well, as Felipe mentioned, he is in Brazil. So time is definitely of the essence. <laughs> Yes, um, yes, and not only time, but also the time zones. I mean, uh, Lizelle is in New Zealand, so she's 16 hours ahead of me. And my line manager is in the UK, but our director is in India. So uh, sometimes we work on crazy times, and it's, but it's great because we, we can, we get to work in a multicultural environment in every sense, all the time. Well, my private question is, are you a conversion in Drupal or the OS software? Um, do you want to answer that? Because I can <laughs> very quickly. It is an OS software, exactly. Open social installation. Indeed. 
Yeah. Maybe you want to also say shortly how it's been uh, generally also your uh, um, relationship so far with the software um, and generally open social. I am sorry, uh, we need to, I need you to ask that question again because I didn't hear it. No problem. So uh, Mark asked if you're using open social Dropper or Drupal download, right? Like the open source version and you are using the open social uh, software and installation. And like, since you've been with us, uh, well, a little shorter since you joined afterwards, uh, I know Change Makers for Children, I think oh, yeah, a year ago or so um, by now. So how is your relation, uh, your experience or relationship been so far with open social? Okay, so I had to use uh, open social before, because before working at Family for Every Child, I was working for Amnesty International in Brazil. So my work was with volunteers. I was responsible to build the community model of our volunteers. And uh, back then we used to work a lot with Greenpeace uh, in a project we had for, for strengthening human rights defenders on environmental issues in, in, in Latin America. So uh, because of that, I, st I started working closely with Greenpeace and then I joined their online platform. So Greenpeace uses Greenwire or Conexão Verde and it's powered by Open Social. So I created my own profile there. So my first experience with Open Social was as a Greenpeace volunteer in Greenwire. Hey, awesome. And of course, as, a, as, a, as an Amnesty International employee as well. And then when I joined Family, I started working with Changemakers. Oh, okay, that's awesome. I actually didn't know that. <laughs> that's really cool. Um, and uh, there's also another question for you. In your experience, what are the best types of content for getting community members to engage? Events. So what is the best type of event? Events. That's what brings people the most. That's what, bring, that what, that's what brings existing users and new users. Uh, I'm, I'm going to replace the term. That's what brings existing community members and new community members, because we can actually promote uh, those events through uh, email marketing. And also we can promote it externally on social media. So that's what brings the most people. And if you can create discussions and topics uh, that are related to it, that's good as well. I also think that discussions can be quite engaging too. Uh, as long as those discussions are relevant strategically relevant to what people are doing so you don't don't create a random discussion uh ask people to actually create something that works for them i also think that's always very important something i also rave it's like think of the the people what do they want to discuss about and push towards that rather than a discussion as a like a community manager would think would be interesting uh, that's awesome. So any last maybe a uh, question before we slowly uh, wrap up? You can send it in in the chat and the q and a. It's really up to you. Uh, just just uh, uh, so another impression I think it's worth sharing is that people usually find it the easiest to create posts on change makers. So the first thing they, they, they will be they will do, is post because it's very intuitive. So if you want to, to start building uh, an engagement pyramid or an engagement strategy, I think you should think about uh, asking people to start by posting and then by, by, by topics and discussions, but you need to make sure they create topics and discussions if you want to have a resource library that is functional, otherwise you're going to lose uh, that information. But start with posts, and do make, do create a landing page, uh, do use the landing page because it's clean, intuitive, and people really seem to enjoy it. Yeah, awesome, great tip. I agree as well with that. Specifically also tags are very important to keep everything categorized. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right. Um, I think we're slowly coming in. Uh, a little more time than expected, but everyone needs a little bit more time, so that's great. <laughs> uh, I think it was really great. Thank you so much, Felipe, for doing this, for joining us, uh, and showing uh, the amazing platform Already Family for Every Child has created. 
I'm super excited to continue the work with you and make it an even better platform and cause even more successes. So in a year, we'll have like 10 more to list, uh, which will be really exciting. Uh, but thank you everyone who will be joining, who will be watching in as well after. And uh, yes, maybe we'll chat another time again. Thank you so much, Felipe, again. My pleasure. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Hey guys, I wish you the best. Take care of yourselves.